Hello, and welcome to another episode of Barely Contained, the online celebrity journalism podcast that's enough to make a bishop kick a hole in a stained glass window. My name is Matt Withers, and I'm once again joined at a safe social distance of 57,936 metres by Chris Beckett to pour over some of the latest celebrity stories from across the information superhighway, including Jimmy Bullard's iconic water pressure, a Coronation Street coat gaff, and Gemma Collins' tiny salmon fillet. Let's go. Hello there, Chris Beckett. Hi, Matt Withers. How are you? Yeah, I am not too bad, thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, good. The end is in sight, I reckon. Yep. Uh, Fortunately, the end is also in sight of this podcast. Uh, So let's get going. (laughs) Just 15 or 20 minutes, people. (laughs) Strap Churn it out. Uh, Would you be interested in a story about the former Corinthian, Dartford, Gravesend and Norfleet, West Ham, Peterborough, Wigan, Fulham, Hull, Ipswich and Milton Keynes Dons midfielder Jimmy Bullard? No, move on. (laughs) (laughs) No, go on then. Yeah, I'm afraid that we're going to have to do this. This is a story from the express.co.uk. It's by Sabina Rouse and it's headlined, It Does Hurt. Jimmy Bullard breaks silence on I'm a Celebrity after early exit. It's obviously due to great pressure on him to break his silence over the, over the uh, years. It's been seven long years during which Jimmy Bullard has been positively monk-like in maintaining his silence on uh, his I'm a Celebrity early exit. But somehow Sabina Rouse has got him to talk. Yeah, unbelievable. It begins, Jimmy Bullard has broken his silence on his I'm a celebrity get me out of here stint, which saw him leave the jungle after only two weeks in the first elimination. Former professional football player Jimmy Bullard, 42, has opened up about his early exit from the Australian game show, (laughs) which is a slightly awkward way of explaining what I'm a celebrity is to uh, an alien. Yeah, Speaking in an exclusive chat to express.co.uk, it's the one they all wanted. (laughs) Somebody at the New York Times is getting strapped to the uh, editor's arse-kicking machine after missing out on this one. (laughs) The Dartford pub owner (laughs) admitted that his shock exit does hurt seven years on from his appearance in the ITV show. Dartford pub owner. (laughs) That's, That's what we'll always think of him. Goodness gracious, there's so much to unpack there. Even even calling someone a football player rather than a footballer. Yeah. Jimmy has candidly discussed the emotions he felt surrounding his exit. He said, "Okay, When you do a show like that, you don't ever want to be voted out first. I was in there for two weeks and that's a long stint. It does hurt a little bit, but that hurt doesn't last long. Trust me. Jimmy made his... (laughs) This is sort of slightly dropping a bomb on the whole (laughs) headline, (laughs) intro, rest of story. The odd thing is, um, he he kind of um, regularly contradicts himself in the space of one sentence. So he says, I was in there for two weeks and that's a long stint. It does hurt. Then it tones it down a little bit, a little bit. And then, but that hurt doesn't last long, trust me. Although it has... Apparently lasted seven years. Yeah, he shrugged it off, and yet seven years later, seven years later, he's he came, broken his silence. He came crying to to the Express.co.uk as some kind of therapy, having bottled it up for so long. <laughs> exactly. Jimmy made his departure after seventeen days and was the first contestant to be voted off. Towie star Gemma Collins and actor Craig Charles both withdrew from the competition before the first vote. Jimmy continued. When you walk over the famous bridge and get back to your hotel, you're a little bit gutted. But once you're eating, it's like, I've done my part. (laughs) So all I have to do, walk over a bridge, go to the hotel. I can assure you that anyone that gets voted out early is quickly forgotten. He's now a Dartford pub owner. Well, he is. That is his his main line of work now. Jimmy went from being the camp favourite to win to being the first to leave after viewers saw him clash with TV personality Jake Quickenden. Jimmy asked the star, 
Why the F star 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 are you in here? What are you? What sort of skill have you got? <laughs> Diplomatic. Addressing the comments on ITV's Lorraine, Jimmy said, it does come across to the outside as harsh. I can understand that. So we were told that he was speaking exclusively to express.co.uk. So presumably these comments are from when he appeared on Lorraine seven years ago. Yeah, yeah, we, we're dusting off the archives here. <laughs> I knew what I was letting myself in for. But believe me, on the inside, it was nothing like that. So is this again? I knew what I was letting myself in for, but actually I didn't. <laughs> Yeah. The former Fulham player revealed that he is still in contact with a few of his fellow I'm a Celeb contestants, including Jake. Jimmy said, I still speak to Mel Sykes, Cole Fogarty, Jake Quickenden on social media and Tinchy Strider every now and again. Now, do we think he does? Oh, what a great, what a great lineup that was. <laughs> it, really, it really was like the golden age of, uh, of Hollywood, wasn't that? Mel Sykes, yeah. Cole Fogarty and Jake Quickenden. I mean, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm with Jimmy a little. I'm not entirely sure who Jake Quickenden is. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you, to be honest. I think when he says he still speaks to them on social media, I think that's my, kind of like, yeah, they follow each other on Twitter type thing. I suspect you might they, click you know, on their name occasionally. Yeah, they don't go to each other's birthday parties, do they? I wouldn't have thought so. He goes on, I think you always have that loose connection, which is nice. When asked if he would ever venture into the Australian jungle again, the former footballer admitted, never, no. Are you mad? So he's definitely going in. <laughs> he's definitely going. I love the suggestion because <laughs> it's not a regular thing um, for them to have a celebrity back for a second time. I think Katie Price is the only one. So the mm. idea that for them to do it another time, eight, nine years on, it would be Jimmy Bullard. It would have to be someone really big. Who are we going to get? <laughs> there's a guy, one of the staff goes, well, there's a guy I know who runs a pub in Dartford. <laughs> you know what? I think there's a there's a certain former whole midfielder size, size gap in this year's lineup. <laughs> Give Bullard a ring. He continued, even though it's one of the best gigs I've done, and it was such a privilege to go on a great show like that, it's so tough. I loved it, but I hated it. Opening up on his plans once lockdown is lifted, Jimmy revealed that he can't wait to get his pub, the One Bell, open again. We've had the pub for 12 years. It's been a long time. It needs to get back on its feet. Um, at this point, Chris, the, the story takes a slightly odd turn for <laughs> the, the, final, the final three paragraphs. Yeah, I, I think it's what's known as an, an agenda certainly <laughs> becomes apparent. However, during the third lockdown, Jimmy spoke about keeping busy by challenging friend and former football player Chris Kamara to various football-related games using the world's first connected pressure washer created by global cleaning experts, <laughs> Kersha. <laughs> I'm just glad they just subtly weaved it in. <laughs> Jimmy said, and this is definitely something that Jimmy said, <laughs> Jimmy said, Everyone has heard of the iconic Kersha water pressures. <laughs> oh. I'm sure. I mean, I think, you know, that iconic moment where he, uh, he, he mocked the whole manager and he kind of wagged his finger at them as they sat down. I do. I like to think that he was talking about water pressures, <laughs> yeah. lecturing them. At half time on the pitch, he's saying, lads, if any of you have got problems for your water pressure at home, I point you towards Kersha. Exactly. Speaking about the smart control technology, Jimmy revealed that he and Cammy had been having fun using the tech. We set up an assault course and used the app to control the power of the pressure washer and brought a bit of football and fun into it. Right. Wow. So that brings that to an end. But note that he's been having his water pressure fun with Chris Kamara. So do yeah. we think that at the same time, that the Express has spoken to Chris Kamara similarly about some long forgotten moment from his past. Here's the next story. <laughs> Chris Kamara feared he would get in trouble with bosses after Sky Sports red card mishap. Chris Kamara has admitted he was worried he would get in trouble with Sky Sports bosses 
after he completely missed former Portsmouth midfielder Anthony van den Borre being sent off while presenting on Soccer Saturday in 2010. Okay. See? So this one was 11 years old. Um, and you move down the article and see well, why on earth have they dredged this one up more than a decade later? Aha. Mm. Meanwhile, football favourites Cammy and Jimmy Bullard recently took on a football theme challenge with a twist, putting their ball control skills to the test by using the world's first connected pressure washer <laughs> created by global cleaning experts, Kersha. Just seamless. Seamless. And it ends... Um, Global cleaning experts Kersha have launched the next generation of pressure washers for 2021, which includes smart control technology and a new app. A new range of smart control and power control pressure washers is available to purchase from www.kersha.co.uk. Um, but they have neither sponsored this podcast nor indeed offered us any access to washed up naughties footballers. So we would not point you in their direction. We, we wouldn't. I mean, you could use a pressure washer for social distancing, I suppose. But, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's got its practicalities, but I'm sure other providers are out there. Exactly. Chris, I believe you've been casting your eye over the Daily Star Online's coverage of uh, the cobbled streets of Weatherfield. Yes, indeed. We are going into Coronation Street. And this is by uh, TV and showbiz reporter Isabel Hein. And the headline is Corrie fans left baffled over Leanne Battersby's coat blunder, a mid drugs storyline. Hmm. Coronation Street fans were perplexed as Leanne Battersby failed to notice drug lord Harvey's coat when hiding from Nick Tilsley, as viewers insisted she could have moved it. This sounds like a big moment in Corrie history. It's like Alan Bradley in the tram. <laughs> Coronation Street fans were baffled over Leanne Battersby's coat gaff during Wednesday's second episode. Twisted Harvey had arrived at Leanne's flat, demanding she sell more drugs for him. And while he was there, Nick arrived. Sell more drugs for me. <laughs> exactly. Do it. <laughs> I just think at this point, Twisted Harvey sounds a little bit like a 90s indie band. It does. Exactly. I can imagine them uh, appearing on a double bill with the soup dragons. <laughs> Leanne panicked and rushed Harvey into another room before Nick came in. But she failed to notice the drug lord's coat on the sofa. Nick noticed the item of clothing and became very suspicious, but fans were perplexed as they insisted Leanne could have covered her tracks more easily. I think the fans probably don't realise that these certain hooks are required in soap operas to move the, uh, the, move the narrative on. You mean coat hooks? Coat, coat hooks, yeah. Some couldn't believe she hadn't seen the jacket, as one viewer tweeted, as if Leanne didn't see the jacket. <laughs> Another penned... Leanne just stared at the jacket and did nothing before Nick entered. Others asked why she didn't tell Nick it was a new garment. Another penned. Penned? <laughs> why didn't she say it was a new jacket? Just, just penning that it's, it's a new, um, you probably missed this, because it's a new function on, on Twitter now. Uh, you can write it down on a postcard and, and send it to Jack Dorsey and he does the actual tweeting for you. I've scribed my uh, latest 140 character message. Um, at the end of tonight's episode, Leanne went to the police station in a bid to reveal the horror Harvey has been putting her through. However, the police officer told her her story didn't add up and at the end of the shocking scenes said he was going to arrest her. Leanne landed herself in some major trouble after she agreed to sell drugs for evil Harvey in a bid to protect her son, Simon. Oh, she's having an absolute mare, isn't she? She is, really. Earlier this week, she was given another job by Harvey and asked Nick if she could use his car. Her secret drug horror could land Nick in some trouble if police trace the vehicle back to him. Fans were convinced Nick could be arrested, as one viewer tweeted... If Leanne ever gets arrested on a drug run, the car is going to get traced back to Nick. So chances are he'll be arrested for drug running as well because it's his car. Oh, word. <laughs> <laughs> Inspector Cluso there. <laughs> a second wrote, Leanne's going to use Nick's car to run drug drops. Leanne will leave drugs in Nick's car. He will get the blame. There's the storyline for the next six months sorted. Penned a third. Oh, somebody's confident. 
Coronation Street airs on Mondays and Wednesdays, 7.30 and 8.30, with an hour-long episode at 7.30 on Fridays on ITV. Um, and just to say... Have you read <laughs> you the one... wanting to say it. Have you read the one comment at the end? I have read the one comment. <laughs> Go on. We have one comment left on this uh, <laughs> Daily Star bid to, to keep the conversation going, and it's by Smithy74, and it just says... What's more baffling is that the pub and cafe are open. I mean, it's a fair point. Okay, Matt. Now, I understand that you're going to be taking us um, on a little tour of the mail online and stopping off at GC. Yep. This is our final uh, story this episode. It is from the mail online, you say. It's by Connie Rusk, and it's headlined... Gemma Collins shows off her tiny lunch of a salmon fillet and five slices of cucumber. She feels she weighs all her meals after shedding three stone. <laughs> what a nice snappy, snappy headline. Yeah, it's like, gotcha. <laughs> Up yours, Dolores. Exactly. She has been flaunting the results of her staggering three stone weight loss after overhauling her fitness regime. And Gemma Collins gave fans an insight into her diet to accompany her workouts on Instagram on Thursday. How publicly, how public minded of her. <laughs> the television personality, 40, stunned fans when she revealed her tiny lunch, which comprised of a salmon fillet and five slices of cucumber. Now, how many pictures would you say we would need of her? Uh, I would <laughs> say a... 162. <laughs> You're not far off. If, um, if, People are out there and they're trying to picture what a salmon fillet and five slices of cucumber look like. Mm. I would direct you to this story. There are a lot of pictures of a salmon fillet and five slices of cucumber. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, it's that's definitely, I'd say that's salmon. And hang on. One, two, three, four, five slices of cucumber. Yeah, it doesn't, exactly. look, it doesn't look particularly edifying, I have to say. But I mean, we'll it, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Gemma said, so guys, this is my lunch today. I can have some Philadelphia of this and spinach, which I can't wait for. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I bet. The reality star then panned the camera across to another salmon fillet and a vine of tomatoes and said, and I'm already prepping my lunch for tomorrow. I get on the scales. I've got to weigh it all out on the scales and I get it in a container. So she gets on the scales. She gets on the scales. Um, yeah, that doesn't make doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Is that when you do that thing, you know, when you want to you want to weigh something out, but you don't want the bowl. You don't want to count the bowl. So you <laughs> yeah. press the button until it goes down to zero. Yeah. And then you put your she, entire she that body with on herself. <laughs> yeah. Gemma also showed a mid-morning snap of almonds and a baby bell. Wow. Uh, and you move it down a bit. Yeah, the, the picture of uh, some almonds and a, and a baby bell. There's a salmon and there's the tomatoes. Baby bell's still in the wrapper. <laughs> it um, looks like something you would see at the Tate. <laughs> it, it does, yeah. Oh, oh Sad lunch, 2021. <laughs> yeah. Oh, give it the Turner Prize. <laughs> we should nominate it for the Turner Prize. Do you know how to do that? There's probably a form that you have to get. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Some of Gemma's followers took to Twitter to comment on the tiny food portion. One wrote, Gemma Collins is not eating enough. Is this all she had for lunch? Poof. Bit, you know, bit of harsh. Don't, don't hold back. Uh, according to the mirror, another <laughs> tight. So on the one hand, it's good, but they're not saying pen. They've said tight which I would mm. say is the conventional method of doing the social media. But I also like the fact that the mail has to rely on the mirror reporting what somebody said on Instagram about Gemma Collins's salmon. It's good to see all the, the, you know, the media working together on this one. Yeah, you really see how the ecosystem works. I mean, it's kind of like um, everyone's in it together. It's basically like the Bilderberg group. Mm. Did anyone see Gemma Collins's lunch? Seriously? That's not healthy, and that amount of food should not be promoted as healthy. When she starts eating normally again, she would just gain the weight back. I love Gemma, but that's not enough food. Mm. A different follower chimed, yeah, I was pretty shocked when I saw that. 
There are barely any calories in salmon and cucumbers. It is. She could at least have had some rice. I mean, we're we're overlooking the baby bell and the almonds here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the baby bell is a big addition, I would say. Mm. Also on Thursday, Gemma showed off her incredible free stone weight loss in a black sports bra and leggings. Speaking in the video, she said, Morning, I've just woken up and I want to come on here with you. My body is literally changing by the day. I am so proud of my achievements, but I wanted to come on here to say, yes, we can't go to the gym at the moment. Not everyone can have a trainer, but if you can find steps at home in the park, you can do this. Fair enough. Last year, Gemma revealed she'd shed free stone after using her time in lockdown to overhaul her lifestyle. The former Chowy star was no doubt spurred on to improve her health after both of her parents were struck down with coronavirus, which left her father, Alan, 72, critically ill when he contracted the virus in December. Hmm. And it goes on a little bit about her previous uh, fitness regimes and her Botox and her filler uh, and various things that are not relevant to the salmon or the cucumber. Yeah, I, you know, I hope there's going to be some good comments. Well, let's have a delve into comment corner. And Bill I Am Wadger in Worcestershire says... With such small portions and all that exercise, you'll be down to nine stones in no time whatsoever. Brackets, one year. It's very specific. Very specific. But I will happily wager 50,000 GBP that you won't. (laughs) Uh, Wow, that's a, you know, that's a film right there. (laughs) That's always my favourite way to, 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 to refer to pounds, Chris. I will not stand for the pound sign. It is GBP. GBP, yes. <laughs> I work for an international bureau de change. Uh, Liz in Cork in Ireland said the only three stones she'd lose would be if she passed three kidney stones. That's just mean. Completely uh, unacceptable. Me55 uh, in rugby said if she was eating just that, she'd have lost a lot more than three stones. Utter rubbish. I've lost a stone in the last year while still eating burgers, pizzas, etc. Just adding a lot more veg and salad and eating less sweet stuff and only walking a bit. If she's only eating that and training all the time, she should be able to shed a stone a month. Oh, fair enough. And finally, the Winkle Picker in Bridge End said yes, but what you don't see is her driving off later for a Big Mac and fries. Bet she doesn't weigh that. Um <laughs> Wow. There's no evidence whatsoever, we should point out, that uh, yeah. Gemma has been driving off later for a Big Mac and fries. Yeah. Well, it's very uncharitable of the Winkle Picker to to sort of suggest that she does. I would expect much better, Chris, from somebody who posts comments on the Daily Mail <laughs> online and goes by the name of the Winkle Picker. I mean, maybe this is, you know, thinking in slightly left field kind of way, but... I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't be at all surprised if like a, a, a string of bouncy red cheeses uh, heading his way. Or her <laughs> way. Oh, that's one for the kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, on that note, uh, Chris, I think we should wrap up for this episode. What say you? Yeah, let's let's do it. Leave them wanting more. Yeah, I'm pretty certain nobody <laughs> is wanting. Or no more. No more. Leave them wanting no more. Um, in, in the interim, Chris, should people choose to interact with the brand uh, online? Where can, they, where can they find us? Yeah, well, they can go to Facebook where they can look at Barely Contain the podcast for all sorts of uh, links and bonus content. Or they can follow us on Twitter um, at Barely underscore pod. Um, feel free to uh, pen us uh, your thoughts there. Uh, Chris, can they find us on Clubhouse? <laughs> no, they cannot find they, us on Clubhouse. They cannot find us on Clubhouse. <laughs> well, uh, thank you very much. We'll be back in a couple of weeks' time with more of the finest online celebrity journalism. Just leaves me to thank you, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, no, and thank you as well, Matt. That was Cheers. very enjoyable. Cheers. Bye-bye. 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 Baby Bell, the little cheese that likes to get out.